Okay. Um, as you see now, this is a chart of 2008, the S&P 500 index, and we, we put it on, um, uh, we track back a little bit to June the 25th of 08, back when, this bar right here, when we were nice and well into the uh, original bearish downtrend right here, which you can see, all this right here is the bearish downtrend that started mid-June into July, okay? And what we did is we placed our price projections to look forward going 12 to 18 months into the future. Likewise, we wanted to go as far as we could to kind of get an idea of what could happen, all things being equal, all things being remaining the same, what would happen if um, the bubble actually bursted for real. And we got into uh, our bubble phases. Those of you who follow Vulcan, Vulcan Report have heard me talk about bubbles and what happens in a, in a bullish market when it gets into a bubble phase and how there are three phases of a bubble. The first and second phase take place like majority of the time, like 99% of the time for the most part. You get into between a, a phase one and sometimes you get into a phase two, but how phase three bubbles are like really rare and almost never occur, but when they do, they're, they're, they're devastating. Likewise, in a bear market, you have your deflated bubble phases one, two, and three. Again, uh, deflated bubble phases one and two can occur quite commonly, and a phase three is pretty rare. In a deflated bubble phase, when, when it comes to stocks, that's when the stock is probably going to get delisted and or file for a bankruptcy. Okay? The company's insolvent, it's dead, it's gone, it gets bought up or broken up or whatever. So that's rare. But in futures and commodities and forex and the overall indexes themselves, stock indexes, they don't um, get delisted or what have you. They just get really, 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 really cheap. And if you want to know just how cheap they can get, it can actually get quite scary. So I'm going to walk you through that. Um, as we delve a little bit deeper into the time price anomaly and the difficulties in projecting and forecasting analysis. All right, so here we are, December 25th, 08, and here's the open high, low, and close. All right, uh, we hit a high of 1335.63 on June 25th of 08. We hit a low of 1314.54, and it closed at 1325.09. Okay, that's what was up on June the 25th of 2008. Now, on the panic of 08, who wants to, however you want to say it. If you come over here with me to the commentary window, this is the actual commentary that was printed out for that day. I want to focus your attention on this part here, the bear market plunge protection team circuit breakers. But actually, before I go there, let's go up to right here. See the bear market downtrend 12 to 18 month price target is 937.87. And what did we say? On June 25th of 08, the market was well above 1300. That's that's quite a quite a pullback. But look what happens when you go to the to the bear market circuit breaker section. The 24 to 36 month price destruction target is 618.76. That's what was being forecasted in June of 08. <laughs> in June of 08, that was the forecast. The price destruction target for bubble phase two, a deflated bubble phase two, 42 to 60 month, panic selling extreme fear price destruction target was 299.65. Remember how I said your second and third phases are pretty rare. The first phase is rare enough, but more common. But that second phase is just, the third phase is just devastating. It's pretty rare. It's devastating. You usually have a lot of intervention along the way before you get there. So, as you can see, as you know, when we when we fast forward, the next the next thing that you're going to see is how, in oh, it, it took until like March, April of 09 before we actually saw that target.
or are close to it realized okay so let's move back over to the chart real quick okay so you can see that and I want to focus your attention right here on this date March the 6th of 2009 on March the 6th 2009 the S&P 500 hit a low of 666.79 what was our target? Our target was 618.76. So we came within about 50 points or 48 points, however you want to say it, to actually hitting the actual target before divine intervention took place. That's pretty scary. So time in, the, the time price continuum is variable in its outputs. And it's very difficult to narrow down to the exact penny or the exact time scale. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is that the, the time piece of the forecast or the projections actually sped up. Remember, the deflated bubble phase one was a 24 to 36 month price destruction target. This occurred in under a year because it was june the 25th i gave you the i gave you i showed you the, the the forecast but we actually saw this realized in march of 09 so you know that, that that that's pretty scary but you can see how the variables can speed up and there there are anomalies within these these uh these variables so Although we didn't actually hit the target, we still um, got well within that uh, that deflated bubble phase. So we did. We, we deflated. And then we managed to, to bounce and rally from that point. So that's some pretty scary stuff. But I just wanted to, to, to show you how uh, this actually does work. And that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to give you an idea of what you can expect and how severe moves can be with all things being equal um, you draw them out to their logical conclusion and so that's what happened at that time all right now as you're looking here at the chart you'll see too you see this uh, this uh, this bar right here this was a buy signal here you see these two little green bulls showing you where support was being was starting to be built and then you see how the swing VIX gave you that turning point signal on March the 10th to go long. Pretty uncanny how it catches these turning points, isn't it? So I just wanted to show you that too. So in closing, there is a great deal of difficulty in being able to discern and project and forecast price. But certain variables have to take place before you can get those outputs. So when it comes to a bear market the system is designed to give you circuit breakers only when the market is well within its trend so it can tell so it, then it, it projects and shows you draw things out to the logical conclusion what you can expect and what you can expect at certain times as time and price begin to converge upon one another okay so that's pretty much what it is and then in a bull market likewise it gives you what you can expect and uh, in terms of that, like where where are you going to go as far as price is concerned in a um, in a bull market? Because it's not good enough just to know what the destruction is when you're when you're bearish, but when a market turns bullish, like as you can see here, officially we turned bullish right here on uh, July the 16th of 09 after the market hit a high of 9:44. That was your first original reading for bullishness. So going forward, one would like to know what can you expect on the long side? If all things being equal, where can we get an idea of where the market's going to go in a bullish scenario? So we program for that also. Now again, this science is not perfect only because of the variables and the anomalies that can occur within a um, 
a price set and there are factors outside that can outside of, of, of the scope of data that can influence these um, these outcomes and you have no control over that and really you're not really trying to be spot on you just want to have an idea a, a ballpark something that's reasonable that you can pretty much set your clock to so that you can be on the right side of the market when you need to be and that's all the uh, price targets are and the circuit breakers are designed for that reason to let you know um, when you can in a, in a bear scenario when you can expect the PPT or other out, outside entities to come in and to, um, and to change things that's very important you have to know that you want to know where your risk is and anyone who um, you know is in the market needs to, there are certain things you just have to know and it's not good enough not to know you, you have to know where your risks are and you want to know too where you should be able to get in and out of a market and do so rather easily that's another reason too why you don't see me um, trading penny stocks and pink sheets I, I just don't do it um, I like to find instruments that are extremely liquid and somewhat volatile you know the more volatility the more money on the table for me the more liquid the more easily I can get in and out of, of, of large positions alright so that that's where liquidity comes into play you need to be you need to have the flexibility to get in and out of the market with large positions alright so that's very important so I, I, don't, I and you notice too I don't track the world I only track a handful of securities because that's really all you need to do to have your, your finger on the pulse of the market. Um, you know, the things that I, I put out on my um, welcome report, that's all you need to follow and trade to make money. You don't need to, to track 10,000 stocks. It, does, it doesn't matter. You just need to be able to get in and get out and make money. I do that by following the indexes and keeping it simple so that I can do what I need to do when I need to do it. All right. Uh, in closing here, I just want to show you this um, this this chart you're looking at now. This is now um, September the 4th of 09. Um, September the 4th of 09, we hit a high of 10.16.40, right? And the welcome report for that, if I move this over here, you can see. So it tells you Friday, September the 4th, 09, price action, the commentary, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let me just scroll this down for a second so I can show you what I need you to see. Okay. Bull market hyperparabolic circuit breakers. Now, we never got here. All right. Even the 12 to 18 month price target was 1863.45. That would have been definitely an all time high, pushing you well beyond that 1565, I think it was, on the contract high for the SP. But again, all things being equal, if the market's going to stay bullish, that's where it's telling you it would have went. See that 12.65? That's the that was the resistance, current resistance at that point. And when you come down here to bubble phase one, price target of 24.61.78. Of course, we never even got there. Markets broke down and um, things happened long before that. So again. It does change with the ebbs and the flows of the market. So, again, it's just it's just giving you um, an idea of where to gauge things. And markets do change. They don't stay in an uptrend or a downtrend forever. Some some trends only last a few months, and then the market turns. So, everything is not a raging bull market. Everything's not a grizzly bear market. We just take the markets as they come and trade them as they come. So that's pretty much it. Uh, really nothing else more to discuss on that. Nothing that I really care to get into as far as the, the time price uh, anomalies. But I think we will discuss um, the limitations now of technical indicators and, and the limitations of fundamental analysis. Um, I really think we need to deal with fundamental analysis and technical analysis so that you guys can get an idea of uh, what time it is with that.